We just want to take time this morning to pray a little bit because uh, throughout this month we are praying. We started last month and we're praying through to the end of the month up to the 1st of August in our, uh, our 40 days of power. And, and we just want to make time to hear from God. Uh, and this week, if you've been following the prayer and be following uh, the devotions, you know that we have been talking about guidance guidance or the leading of the Holy Spirit, how God leads us and how God guides us. One of the challenges that we all have as Christians is knowing the will of God. What does God want me to do? I'm going to make a decision. What is the right decision? And especially when it comes into areas like marriage, people want to be sure, is she the right is he the right person? Uh, should I be married to him? Should I be married to her? Uh, between these two, whom should I choose? And, and beyond that, we make choices. Uh, where should I work? Should I travel? Should I stay in Ghana? What is God's will for my life? What is God's purpose for my life? We're always struggling with that. And everybody struggles with that because we need to be certain that God is leading us. So, uh, the scriptures give us some clues and there's no PowerPoint, so I'll just uh, throw in a couple of scriptures and then we pray. Romans chapter 8 verse 14 and 16 uh, says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Now remember that when the Bible says sons, uh, it is not in a gender sense. It is a generic word. To, to mean children of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the children of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit for, of adoption whereby we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So plainly, the Bible teaches us that God's children are led by the Spirit of God. God's children are led by the Spirit of God. And then the second thing we learn is that the Holy Spirit's leading does not create bondage. The Holy Spirit's leading does not create bondage. Uh, so when the Holy Spirit is leading a person, it doesn't create fear in us. It doesn't create apprehension, bondage. It doesn't make you feel like something terrible is going to happen to you because the spirit's leading does not create bondage we are led by the spirit of god and this leading of the spirit of god does not create bondage and thirdly uh, when we are led by the spirit of god the bible says our spirit bears witness with the spirit of god so god leads us by his spirit his leading does not create bondage. And every time God leads us, our spirit will bear witness to it. What does that mean, that our spirit will bear witness? It means that when God is leading you, you will sense it or you will feel it in your spirit. Even if somebody told you, I saw a vision about you, first of all, Whatever they saw about you must not create bondage. You know, because sometimes people are in the habit of telling us things to put us under bondage. Put too fear into you. I saw, oh, I saw a coffin and you were lying in it. And God says, if you don't pray, this is your end. And, and by the time you hear that word, you are so afraid. You are so afraid that you, you don't even know how to pray again. But if it's the spirit of God leading you the witness will be different it will not be i saw a coffin and you were lying in it god will say i've promised you life and walk in the life it's the same thing i give you life walk in it and you are going to die uh, communicating the same thing but if it's of the spirit of god it doesn't lead us into bondage any leading that puts you into bondage is not of god if you want to know whether the vision the person saw about me and, and, and what they say, the prophecy <clears throat> I was given is of God or not, ask yourself, does it create bondage and fear in me 
or does it create liberty in me? If it's of the Spirit of God, it creates liberty. Why? Because God wants us to walk by faith and not by fear. Anything that inspires fear is not of God. If it's of God, it will inspire faith. It will inspire faith. Because it is only by faith that we overcome. By fear, we succumb. By faith, we overcome. By fear, we succumb. By faith, we overcome. So if it is of God, it will not create bondage. And then he says, if it is of God, your spirit will bear witness with it. Every child of God, every believer, no matter their level of spiritual maturity, if, if a person is a believer, just got born again today or last night, they can hear from God as well as a person who has been a believer for 50 years. Both of them have the same father. God does not treat his children differently. God does not say, I, I will only speak to my older children. I don't speak to the younger children. No, he speaks to all. The older, the younger, and the teens. Speaks to all of us. And so, even if you are not an old Christian, you haven't known the Lord for a very long time, God speaks to you. And he speaks to you by his spirit living inside me inside of you this is how jesus put it in john chapter 16 from verse 12 he says i still have many things to say to you but you cannot bear them now however when he the spirit of truth has come he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak of his own authority but whatever he hears you speak and he'll tell you things to come he will glorify me for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the father has are mine. Therefore I said he will take of mine and declare it to you. Remember Jesus calls the Holy Spirit the spirit of truth. Not the spirit of lies. Not the spirit of deception. <clears throat> there is a spirit of deception and there is a spirit of truth. Anything that leads to deception is not of God. So how am I going to know whether it's of God or not? Is it true? Or is deception? Is it creating bondage and fear? Or is creating faith in me? And not only the whole, is the Holy Spirit the spirit of truth. He leads into all truth. And Jesus says that he speaks for Christ. And he glorifies Christ. Glorifies Christ. So how do we hear from the Holy Spirit? I'll talk about four things and then we start praying. First, you have to respect the Holy Spirit and his person. You have to respect the Holy Spirit. You cannot dishonor the Holy Spirit and hear from him. If you're going to hear from anybody, you have to respect the person. If you don't respect me, you wouldn't listen to me. I suppose you are in church today listening to me because you respect me. So when I say something, you pay attention. You will consider it. You will give it a thought. And you say, okay, it, it makes sense. Let me think it through because that is respect. If you don't respect me, me then no matter what I say, you say, oh, let, let him go. Well, who, who does he think he is? So if you, if you have the same treatment about the Holy Spirit, then you can't hear him. For you to hear his voice, you have to respect the Holy Spirit. You don't have to talk evil of the Holy Spirit. You don't have to criticize the Holy Spirit. You don't have to live a life that shuns the Holy Spirit. If you're living in sin, walking in sin, walking in total disobedience against God, you don't respect the Holy Spirit. So it's going to be difficult hearing his voice. Doesn't mean he's not speaking. He's speaking, but your disrespect shuts your ears from him so you have to respect the holy spirit secondly you have to recognize his presence you have to recognize his presence you have to recognize when he's in a place when he's talking to you you have to recognize moments 
When the Holy Spirit indicates something to you, you have to recognize when he's in a place, especially when you are in a service and, and, and you, you want to hear from the Holy Spirit. You have to recognize his presence. You can't be in church and be texting with a friend and still hear from God. You can't be praying and your mind is still imagining something else and hear from God. It, it can't work. So you don't even recognize that this moment is for God because this moment which is supposed to be for God, your mind is at home or your mind is in the office, but you're praying. And many times, you know, people are praying, but their mind is not there. So you have to respect, you have to recognize. And thirdly, you have to respond to his promptings. Respond to his promptings. The Holy Spirit leads us in many, many ways. Little, little things. Sometimes you're talking, 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 and you, you just feel a prompting within you. Stop talking. You're talking too much. And when that comes, stop talking. Because if you keep talking, 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 you don't show respect to his prompting. The Holy Spirit prompts us in many times. Sometimes it is talk to that person, pray for that person, intercede for that person, give to that person. And it doesn't have to be a very loud instruction. It is a prompting. When we say something is prompting, it is, it is subtle. It's like, you know, my wife and I, when we, we are sitting in a place, we prompt each other in many, many ways. Nobody would know we are prompting each other. Just a little twink of the eye, I'll know what she's saying. All of you husbands, so you do that. A little sign, you know, okay, you get a beat. <laughs> and that's how the Holy Spirit is. You have to get a beat. You have to get a beat. He's not coming to shake. He's saying, hey, my son, I'm talking to you. Oh, I'm talking. No, 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 no. It's a little prompting. It's a little nudge. It's a little discomfort in your heart. It's a, it's a little, shut up. Don't do it. Sit down. Wait. You know, maybe you're driving your car. You're, you're just zooming and you just hear. S slow down. That's a prompting. He's not going to hit your head. Hey, slow down, slow down. No, 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 no. He's not on a trotter planket boy. He's not going to say so. It's a nudge. It's a, it's a prompting. And, and, and if you respect him, you slow down. And as you learn to respect the Holy Spirit in these little, little things, he begins to lead you in big, big things. Because if you can't recognize him and respect him in the little things he's leading you into, you cannot recognize when the life and death matters are coming. Because I believe that God never does anything without telling us about it. The thing is, most times you're not listening. But nothing happens to the believer that God does not tell us about it. He prompts us, he nudges us, he tells you don't do it, he tells you pray a little bit more. Sometimes he can wake you in the night. You just wake up at 2 a.m., you don't know what to do, and you just feel, I should pray. Pray for what? Pray. So all you do is pray. Because that's all he said, pray. Or sometimes it can be a prayer for somebody else. Pray for that person. Or you can be in your car and you just feel a prompting. Pack and wait and pray. Do it! Because that's how we obey the Holy Spirit. Are you hearing me? Because many of us think the only time the Holy Spirit is going to speak to us is when a prophet tells us something. As a matter of fact, that should not be the way in which the believer hears from God. The way the believer hears from God primarily is that the Spirit of God living inside of him prompts him all the time. And then when a prophet or somebody comes and says, Oh, God said this about me, about you. The Spirit of God in you must bear witness. The spirit must bear witness. So the person may say, sometimes even what they say may be true. But something inside of you says, hmm, be careful. Be careful. Although what he's saying seems to be true, the prompting inside of you says, be careful. Please, obey what is inside you. 
we are led from the inside out not from the outside in the spirit within us leads us so this morning we're going to pray we have just a few minutes and we want to pray and one of the things we want to pray for is Lord help, help me to honor the Holy Spirit and respect his presence help me not to grieve the Holy Spirit help me not to turn the Holy Spirit away when he's present in my life we want to welcome him and his work in our lives amen let's rise up together all right lift up holy hands to the lord somebody said pastor why do we have to lift up holy hands it's a it's a physical symbol of a spiritual condition when we lift up holy hands we say lord we surrender it's all for you we give it all to you that's why we lift up our hands when we pray it's a sign of surrender to the lord so we want to lift up holy hands to the lord and we want to begin to talk to god and we want to say lord help me to recognize when you are present in a place help me to recognize you help me to recognize the holy spirit help me lord help me lord i need help i need help please just begin to pray begin to pray begin to pray talk to god open my heart lord open my mind open my ears lord open my eyes lord let your voice be real to me lord let your leading be real to me lord guide me lord by your spirit lead me by your voice let me catch the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Catch the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Catch the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Let's recognize his presence in this service this morning. You are here, Holy Spirit. You are in us, but you are also present in this atmosphere. You who lives in us is working in this atmosphere. As you did for the apostles, they felt your presence in the upper room. Lord, let us feel your presence in this auditorium. Hallelujah. Pray in the spirit. Pray with your understanding. Sing in the spirit. Sing with your understanding. We worship you, Lord. He's here in this place. He lives in us and he works in this atmosphere. You're in this atmosphere. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. You are awesome in this place. Mighty God. You are awesome in this place. Abba Father. You are worthy. 
distracted. Don't be distracted. You are keep your thoughts. Keep your mind. Don't lose focus. you should be praying about and focusing on. Oh, Holy Spirit. Don't lose focus. Don't lose focus. speak to you let him guide 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 you let him lead you into all truth things you don't know things to come things to happen secrets you have no intention no knowledge of he knows them dropping them in your spirit. He's dropping it in your spirit. Your spirit is catching them. Your spirit is bearing witness. Your spirit is bearing witness. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, saya la
catch his word as he bears witness with your spirit as he bears witness with your spirit as he bears witness with your spirit Pray for that person. fragrance like a sweet aroma in this place we thank you for your presence Holy Spirit we know you are here thank you for your promptings thank you for your leading thank you for touching our minds guiding our prayers Thank you that you deliver us from all harm by ordering our steps. The steps of a righteous person are ordered by the Lord. We thank you, Lord. Our steps are ordered by your Spirit. This week, we walk ordered steps. Ordered steps. Ordered steps. Ordered steps. Ordered steps. Oh, things are going to break out in your life this week. Things are going to break out powerfully this week. Ordered steps. Ordered steps. Ordered steps. And we give you praise and we give you glory. And we give you adoration, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Make a practice. Make a practice of this. Make a practice of this. Make, make it a practice. Spend quiet moments in the presence of the Lord and you'll be amazed at the direction he'll give you. And your steps will be ordered. It will be ordered. You will walk in the ordered steps of the Lord. And the Lord will give you victory. By his spirit in Jesus name. Let's celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.